The rumour broke about a week ago that UK Kobayashi was going to be making a January swoop into Celtic Park. And it was only a matter of days ago, Ange Postacoglu went on the record as saying that we are planning for January. A few things are done. That's the way we want to operate and we are going to go into this window and strengthen. Now, I must say, before we go into the video, Ange typically has married that comment up with some of the fans might need to deal with losing some of their favourite stars. So TBC on some of the incomings and outgoings that we're going to see, not just over this international break, but in the actual January window itself. Ange has also said in these comments that he doesn't like last minute moves and even though O'Reilly was done over three days, they don't want to do that unless absolutely necessary. But with Celtic, you just never know. Kobayashi joined Celtic on a five-year deal and in this video today, I'm going to be looking at exactly when I see him slotting into the Celtic team, the impact that he's going to have on us, as well as what this all might potentially mean for some of the other defenders at the club. At any point in the video today, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. On paper, it's very clear to see why Kobayashi has been identified by Ange Postacoglu and Celtic as a fantastic transfer to get in this transfer window. His passes into the opposition half have an over 75% success rate. Accurate long passes into the opposition over a 50% success rate. He also completes 1.4 tackles, 1.3 interceptions, and wins 68% of his duels per 90 minutes. Which for a progressive defender in today's modern football, with a left foot naturally left footed as well, he really ticks all the boxes for the archetype left centre back that you would want in today's football. Over his last 15 games, he's averaged 4.75 accurate passes into the opposition's final third. 3.98 accurate long balls as well. These can be diagonal passes that go across the pitch and 7.2 passes into the opposition half. Now, that's a really important statistic because, as you know, Celtic centre-halves are forever taking the ball into the opposition half. It's a huge part of how our build-up play operates. And first of all, I'll just touch on this because we'll come back to it later, OK? Think about the four centre-backs that have played at Celtic this season. Welsh, Carter Vickers, Starfelt and Jens. And as I'm describing Kobayashi, what he brings and what he offers, I want you to think in your head which other defender does the stuff that this guy offers. And we'll come back to that later. Now, Vissel Kobe were riding really high and they had huge expectations of doing very, very well in Asian football. Obviously, we then went to Kyogo Furuhashi off of them, but they went out and they strengthened. They really did. They went. They brought in Japanese international players coming back from Europe, coming back from the Premier League, coming back from the Bundesliga. And they were looking to have an amazing season. Unfortunately, it never really worked out for them like that, um, mainly due to the, you know, there's a lot of factors that went into that, but as you look at the defence, there's been no consistency there. One of the huge things that Kobayashi is going to bring to this Celtic team is being able to work effectively in a partnership. Throughout his time at Vissel Kobe, his centre-half partner, Rio Kikuchi, has been one of the best centre-backs in the J-League, and he mirrors in so many ways Cameron Carter Vickers in terms of being the ball winning commanding centre half that wins the headers gets up the pitch and is really kind of leading the team as a captain Kikuchi is probably a bit more goal dangerous than what Carter Vickers is but the point still stands um, and as you can see over the last five games when these guys play together in that kind of effective partnership you know yes they're picking up clean sheets they're getting their team over the line but they're picking up an incredible amount of statistics for their successful passing as well as rotating the ball from left to right and then progressing through the pitch as well. And Vissel Kobe, a dominant team when they do get dominant form, and even in this game here against Kawasaki Frontale, who again are another dominant team in Japanese football. If Kobayashi didn't concede a penalty himself, he still filled a lot of the statistics that you would expect to see from him when he's playing weaker opposition. So seeing a lot of these accurate final third passes and long balls, interceptions happening in one of the biggest games of the season, fair enough that their season was kind of dead, but you know, it's a headline fixture. And then playing Yokohama F Marinos, the eventual league winners. Unfortunately, conceding three goals doesn't do much for your score. He did come off at half time as well. Now, Kobayashi playing as a left centre back means when we are building up from this left hand side of the pitch, and for me, I just want to take this wee minute to say this the left hand side of the pitch for me is is the best thing about the team at the moment. Rio Hitate, Greg Taylor and Jota, when all fit and available, have got great synergy, are our best players quite clearly. And if they get further enhancement with a left-footed centre-back, they can play very naturally on that side of the pitch and in cohesion with them as well. 
then our best side of the pitch just got a hell of a lot stronger with a guy like this. It can carry the ball into crowds. Win his duels, you know, he's a guy that can win 50-50s. And he's also got an eye for a pass as well to play it into space for other players as well. And, you know, Cameron Carter-Vickers is a reluctant ball-carrying defender. For me, Starfelt, again, a bit of a reluctant ball-carrier. Jens loves to do it, but Jens is right-footed on that left-hand side. And sometimes a lot of his mishaps can kind of come down from that square peg in a round hole kind of situation. So I think having a left-footed Yen, someone who can actually go into midfield, because like we've seen with Celtic, when we've got Taylor and Juranovic coming into midfield, when McGregor's fit as well, our team kind of banks up like this, traditionally speaking. A lot of our build-up places, Cameron Carter-Vickers, CCV, carrying the ball out of defence and getting into the midfield position, and quite often turning around and either playing it into McGregor, Juranovic, or his centre-back partner. All of these moves basically will then dictate how we're going to go on in attack. But quite often, whether we play it to McGregor when he's fit and available, or Cameron Carter-Vickers' centre-half partner, we're then going to be going into this area here, and we're looking to get Rio Hitate, Jota, Kyogo, Greg Taylor, and McGregor when fit. We're looking to get these guys on the ball in these tight spaces, make the overlapping runs, catch the opposition out of, um, out of sorts, and then make things happen. And I can't say it enough, having a player that's quite comfortable to take these higher positions up, because as we get right into the final third and we're actually trying to go on and score, having somebody that can eat up these yards and be comfortable in a high position here so that when play does break down, you know, we've had a shot at goal or something like that, and then they're going to just try and clear it along. Someone who can have the wherewithal to bring the ball down and then keep a good pass going actually into an attacking player that's coming back into a good bit of space to keep his going. Because the mantra at the club is we never stop. And having players that can, if you think about it in like a training session kind of scenario, if you think about it like the throw-ins that we have at Celtic as well, we want the ball to be in play at every opportunity. We don't want any seconds to breathe. So anytime defences try to get relief from a set piece from us or a consistent period of attack, they're going to try and shell it long and having players that can deal with that within two or three touches and keep the pressure back on in a really effective and accurate way. I don't think I can be understated enough how much this could really upgrade us. Now, I think Kobayashi, once he's been fully integrated into the team, I think he's the number one left centre-back on paper. He's got that raw potential to tick all the boxes for Angie and make that position his own. Because like I said earlier on in the video, I don't think Starfield, I don't think Carter Vickers are willing ball-carrying players I think Welsh is very willing to carry the ball, but he's on the right, I think, with Carter Vickers primarily. And Jens has been put into the left-hand side, I think, just down to injury over this season. Um, and he's been very good at carrying the ball out from defence. So out of all the defenders I've named, I think Kobayashi has been picked by the manager, has been identified by the manager. We need a left-footed centre-back. I think he goes in. We've obviously paid big money for Vickers, and I think he comes in as well. So... We've got Jens on loan. The rumoured fee is three and a half million to make that permanent. I think he's worth it and I would sign him on. I think the manager loves Welsh so much and he's always going to have a place in the club for Welsh. And like we've seen with like Forrest this season and one or two others, having these guys that are ready, willing and able, like Ralston also, to be called upon and can do the job that are club guys that bleed green and white. I don't think you can put a price on that. So I'd really, as Welsh is up for it and he gets treated well and he gets what he's promised and he delivers... I've got no I've got no problems with Welsh. I think Starfelt is maybe the third wheel now in this situation. And I think that will maybe push Celtic to get him minutes, get him in the shop window, and maybe get him sold on. So I think we'll still see a lot of all of these defenders for the remainder of the season. The level, and that's why I wanted to highlight the last couple of games, right? Because Kobayashi, if you think about when Kyogo, Maeda, and Rio all first came to Scotland and how hard they hit the ground running. Kobayashi is going to be doing the exact same thing. He's finished a season. He's got a nice big international break like everyone else does. He'll be coming into camp and he'll be getting up to speed as quick as he can. And he'll want to finish this season with some medals around his neck. But we are still fighting on a lot of fronts and we have a lot of fit and capable players. And the manager is not shy of giving people their opportunity if they're grafting and putting the work in on the training field. And then when they're given the opportunity, taking it. Who do you think is the, the third wheel now in the Celtic centre-back fraternity? Let me know in the comment section down below. I look forward very much to seeing Kobayashi in the green and white hoops. Let me know your thoughts on the Japanese centre-back below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and retweet. All that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Heel heel. Bye-bye.